Alright everyone, how are you all doing? I'm Fiesta here and today we have desktop NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 loses quite a bit of performance when you're using it as an external GPU. NVIDIA RTX A6800 workstation GPU has been officially launched and it is very expensive. BCLQ overclocking is now uh, not working with Intel 30th generation non-K series, so that's a bummer. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti is expected to have performance like an RTX 3070 and the pricing might be very much appealing. ASRock made an expansion card that could turn a B650 motherboard into an X671. That's interesting. And lastly, NVIDIA might discontinue the GeForce Amex discrete GPU series. Sadly. So firstly, we have an eGPU forum here, and this user, Omega Malchior, has made this benchmarks with the uh, GeForce RTX 4090 with an external uh, input. And if you look into it, this is the, well, the picture that he provided that is being used as an input or the external GPU. But the performance are not looking that great, because if you look into it, uh, in 3 Mark Time Spy, well, the score, as usual, in, in desktop, uh, you'll get 30,373 or around that, you know, performance, which is great, not bad. But when you look into the graphics score for the, uh, for the RTX 4090 when it is used in, in external, as an external GPU, the performance goes down to 29,532. So you're losing around 20% performance here. That's not really good, is it? Like, 20% is huge. Like, very huge. I get it, maybe there's a latency issue going on, but that's pretty big, if you can, if you ask me. So, maybe there's some kind of, like, uh, issue going on here. Maybe that can be fixed somehow. I don't know how, but, yeah, it's like the performance is kind of 20% getting tanked. It's not that good. Next up, we have the NVIDIA RTX 6000 ADA generation. Well, this is the work, uh, well, I should say, the workstation GPU here and well it's it's very expensive and it's I mean it makes sense why it's expensive six thousand eight hundred dollars will you will get and the specs are pretty appealing of course the GPU memory is 48 gigs so very very crazy like sure so yeah I mean it's it's not only expensive it's pretty good don't know how well it's gonna perform depends on you know the benchmarks again this is not a typical benchmark that you can do you need to you need to have a workstation to do so so yeah it's quite expensive, but it's available now. Next up, we have Tom's Hardware reporting this, and that is the overclockable Intel non-K chips. Well, you could overclock that. Basically, the Intel 4 1200 series, the 12700K or 12900K, whatever, or not the K, non-K models, I should say. Those you could have, you know, overclocked using the BCLK overclocking, right? And this is a feature in motherboards, some motherboards, obviously, but now... Uh, there's a problem, and that is the 30th generation Raptor Lake CPUs don't support that, uh, well, overclocking, the BCLK overclocking. For some reason, Intel might have found out that, that they can, you know, block that, and they just blocked it. For some reason, that's kind of not good. But yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of sad, but still, the, the older Lake CPUs, though, they're working completely fine. I mean... The older like non-K series, uh, you can still overclock them. As you can see, this is the well, this is a, a picture that we are getting, and this is the MSI uh, motherboard here that they're using. This is a Mag B650M motor, which is let me just zoom into it so we can clearly see that. There we go, Mag B660M motor, and they're using the well, you can as you can see micro selection, which is a non-K but overclocked. So yeah, the BCL overclocking is still working on the. Uh, this is the Intel 12700. So, the non-K CPUs for the older Lake works, but, uh, well, the third generation, well, the Raptor Lake doesn't work. That's kind of bummer, but, yeah, what else you can do, right? Next up, we have Copite 7 can we just answer this question, that is, the any performance data are too early, according to the, well, the 46 Ti performance. And he says that it's going to be performing same as the RTX 3070, which is nice, but what's more appealing is that, according to... My driver is this article here, and they just gave an exposure for the RTX 46 Ti, and they're saying that it's going to be below $500. If that is the case, which is very good pricing, they might win the, well, the mid-range market here. Below 500 and you're getting 
Uh, same as the RTX 3070 performance with better ray tracing, I believe, and better features like DLSS 3 support and many more. But yeah, maybe it kind of makes it appealing. Less than $500, not to mention RTX 3070 was around 500 So if they can pull it off, maybe that can make it a uh, very good budget-friendly, or uh, not budget-friendly, I should say, a mid-range card. So let's hope for it. Next up, we have ASRog adding this expansion card. Which is very interesting looking as you can see. So this is basically an expansion for the X670 motherboard. Or basically an uh, B650 motherboard I should say. Which can turn it into an X670 motherboard. For cheap I guess. But we don't know the price yet. But hoping this is going to be cheaper. But th there's a caveat here. This ca card only works for a certain motherboard that hasn't been released yet. Because that motherboard uh, has some custom bios that requires i don't know why that is the case but yeah i mean it only works with a certain motherboard and and also this is a very ex expand uh, you know expand into more features and if you look into the features here well as you can see right here this supports two pcie x4 times nvme m.2 slots extra two of them which is nice that also gives you a uh three usb type a and also one type c port which is great type c like that's pretty good honestly and also two sata connectors and also supports which is probably the best feature probably the best feature 10 gigabits ethernet connection that's huge i have to say that's huge like it supports so many things then you can just turn your b650 motherboard into a x670 but the problem is or I should say B650, not a B670. But th yeah, the problem is that you would require a certain motherboard that hasn't been released yet for some reason. I don't know why, but yeah, like, that's kind of strange. I guess we have to wait and see if that gets released or not. Should be, right? Because this is such a great uh, invention, I should say. Next up, we have IT House informing this information, which is... The performance nuclear graphics have soar, and then Nvidia have a given up on the Amex series. So basically, that means that... Uh, NVIDIA is looking to shut down production for the Amex series of GPUs for the, of course, the 10 notebooks and laptops. So, yeah, like, there won't be any or more Amex 570, but does anybody care? I don't know. Maybe for the notebooks, they might want to use something else, but I wonder what they're going to use for, you know, the 10 light notebooks, because you need a lower tier GPU for that, right? But yeah, they're just ending the production for the Amex series, so I guess rip Amex. Alright, that is it for today. What do you think about the RTX 4060 Ti? Do you think it's going to be good enough in uh, in terms of performance and pricing? Like 3070-like performance and less than $500. Though, we don't know how much less. Maybe $450? Maybe? Maybe not? Who knows? But we'll see about that. For now, we just have to wait. So yeah, have a good day. Like, share, and subscribe. See ya.